Hello everyone and welcome to Fuse Room. I'm probably Alberto and in this video we are going to talk about PSP AudioWare Saturator. So there's a lot of saturation plugins out there. There's no way to deny that, but there's always been a lot of them because clean digital audio is boring and the records we love to listen to without telling anybody in our car, they come from a period of time in which tubes, tape, transformers, you name it, you know, illegal substances probably as well, were actually part of why the sound of those records is so lovable and, you know, addictive somehow. So a lot of companies make plugins that do saturate your audio. One of these is PSP AudioWare, which is no exception. Let's go over the interface from top to bottom and find out the few parameters that are actually a little bit, you know, overwhelming if you don't know what they're doing. So on the top, you have zoom factor, a menu where you can hide or show hints and then, you know, read the manual. And then a typical PSP AudioWare, save, copy, paste, a, B presets, copy A to B and vice versa, and undo and redo, which in my opinion are always welcome in any plugin because that's the beauty of working with digital. The preset menu is incredibly well done. There's application, designer, and then your own custom presets. When you go to designer, there's a lot of famous names in here with pictures as well. So you have a lot of time to really understand why you should have attended those dinners and no wonder why your career went the way it went. So that's exactly what I wanted, fantastic, and uh, we can leave this menu now. Now, the PSP Saturator logo on top opens the signal flow scheme, uh, the actual schematics, and this is really interesting because it allows to it allows us to see, you know, how the signal flows from input to output, which again is not super easy to predict or like instinctively kind of understand. The view reference can be also set here, credits and stuff. And then there's the main pane. The meters obviously are pretty self-explanatory. They can read pre, post, or drive values. And in the middle, there's the most important part and section of these plugin. You have a shape, which is the global behavior of your saturation from none to hard clip, soft clip, RAM, modern tape, and warm tape. I'm gonna turn these on with the global um, processing and we're gonna take a look at how it works. So right now, what you can see here is that I'm probably having something very high passy, right? So if I go to open and turn these on, you can see that there's the inside of the guts of these virtual machine, which is super, super cool. And we're gonna take a look at it as soon as I'm done turning pretty much everything sort of off. So we can really see what the unit does when you bypass it and when you engage it. There's just mild high pass and low pass, which would be expected in an analog unit as well. When you turn on the shape, you still can really get the feeling of the actual machine you're dialing in without having anything truly turned on. So you can get low level saturation, high level saturation, and then there's a global button for like the huge, the biggest knob here for the global saturation of the unit. So when I turn these on and I can, you know, select a frequency, then turn warmth on and off, you know, from zero up, they recommend that you go from zero to higher levels because this can be quite overwhelming if your system can reproduce such low frequencies and then level which is a sort of an offset that you can kind of a cleaner way of handling the warmth so both knobs can really help you tailor the way you saturate the lows which is not just in the frequency domain it's also in the time domain the high frequency saturation also does that it's quite not a bump in itself as maybe the lows would be it's more high frequency saturation and compression and it's called softness in a little bit. So you select your frequency and then you move level again and then you move softness. You can achieve a lot of massaging of the frequencies. And then the global saturation, which sort of acts as, again, a global sounding behavior. So what makes these particularly unique, in my opinion, is not only the high quality of the design, but it's also the fact that you can really fine tune the detector with those little trims that you see in here. First and foremost, you have fat on and off. 
that is a four times oversampling engine that applies to high end saturation mechanisms, not to the high HPF or lows. This is um, suggested to be turned on when you're working at lower frequency rates, like 44.1, 48, I would assume, or when you have very, you know, critical listening environments in which you need, for example, a mix to really work, you know, in a, in a high quality level or lead vocals, you know, whenever you have the CPU resources to do it, it's probably better unless you're working very high sample rates to have these on for added quality and reduced artifacts. The SCHPF is a high pass filter and it only involves the side chain. So this is not audible, but it forces the detector circuit and then the saturation level to work on a narrower or more specific kind of frequency range. This, as you can see, makes the whole um, low level saturation change drastically. So it's not just a way to actually filter frequencies, it's actually a way to modify the behavior or our, of our machine, and it has a lot of movement, a lot of leeway here. The smooth factor determines how easy the algorithm is on artifacts and aliasing. So if you have a zero value, it's probably the old school saturation box. And if you go towards, you know, 100, you get a smoother behavior in all of those artifacts or those you know, gritty, maybe more aggressive traits of saturation. Might be something you want, might, some, might be something you don't want for sound design, but it's incredibly useful to have it because if you're working on mixes and mastering, you know, you might want to have some smoothness to avoid really making it, you know, very blatant. The makeup is a makeup, so you use it to compensate whenever you're losing a lot of detail because of maybe heavier saturation on program material. And then you have a real HPF. This can be pre, post, and pre-post. And you set it up as you would use an HPF. This is because sometimes you get such a very nice but heavy low bump that you might wanna high pass your saturation. And again, everything here through a band pass is compensated when you're turning on and off, you know, moving your mix knob, which is incredibly useful because that would otherwise make our mix knob completely unusable. So that's a very good sign that the people at PSP Audioware, as I said, know what they're doing. Because a lot of times you might miss these details and the controls are not that controllable, you know. At the very end, you have input, output. Again, you can link them so that they go one against the other. And you have an off, which is, you know, no limiter, no soft clipping, or you can turn on limiting or sat, which is soft clipping, and it works at zero dBFS. So on your very last stage. Now, this is all, and it's a lot of stuff. If you go take a look of the, at the harmonics, it really makes almost no sense to look at the cards because all of these needs to be listened to and heard. So now that we know how the plugin works, let's take on with some examples how, you know, to dial in saturation at various stages and, you know, get a feeling and vibe for just a few of the many settings that you can dial in on this plugin. Here we are in Studio One with three examples, a rock song, a video game soundtrack, and a jazz tune. Let's start from rock. I'm gonna give rock a head start. I'm gonna work with the shape, then a little bit of low saturation, high, global saturation, maybe fiddle with the advanced parameters, give you an idea of what this plugin can do.
Call me crazy, I really love this plugin. I gotta say, I didn't have much time to play with it. So this is also like the most quality time I'm spending with it. Now, let's move to a second song. I'm kind of excited now because I want to use it on my own soundtrack. So last chorus, very dark kind of tune. This is going to be probably very different. Let me load my non-Grammy winning preset and uh, let's try and see where it goes. I'm probably not going to use modern tape here. My soundtracks personally don't usually work with a lot of tape oriented stuff, but there's one parameter, the one shape that's called ram, and it's like a ram horns. So I've tried that and it's kind of aggressive the way I like it. Or maybe hard clip. Let's try. We'll see. Or maybe, maybe tubes. Maybe, I don't know. Let's try it. I'm kind of super excited. I love what this did. And you hear how kind of a bit harsher it was. And then I turned fat on and it kind of became like a more of a highlight over a huge skyline, very high quality photograph, sort of. And then with the smoothness, a little bit added makeup. I mean, you've seen where it goes. It just developed easily. And I am not an expert on this plugin. I'm just, you know, saying the same thing. Um, jazz, people, this is ruling any genre we throw at it. So I'm curious to see where we're going. Again, my preset and let's go. Maybe here it's kind of an older sounding tune. We wanted to make it a sort of an old school Brazilian jazz tune. So I'm probably gonna go with Valve first. Maybe it's gonna get things to be a little bit more compelling and fun. Let's try it. Eu gosto de viver nessa cidade Te ouvir o apito insano do metrô Subir pelas escadas rolantes flutuantes De andar me cansar na corrida Que São Paulo não pode parar Eu gosto de viver nessa cidade Mesmo quando eu me sinto mais só Toda essa solidão Nos aproximou as mãos Isso nos fez um bem tão grande This is great. It's probably one of the videos where I shouldn't even comment. It just works. I'm incredibly lucky and spoiled to be able to work on such a huge variety of plugins, but they are not all the same. So all of them I've covered, including PSP Saturator, have such a unique yet high quality and you know pristine way of working on your audio that you know, despite any conclusion I might make and anything I might say, the demos just speak for themselves. Check it out. We're going to see each other soon. And as usual, I hope this is giving you ideas to develop your mixes in a specific way. Get that final 5-10% that can really by itself give everything maybe your mix needs and makes it ready for production. And we'll be seeing each other soon. Thank you very much. Ciao.